thanks for joining us. And you are? Hi, <laughs> I'm Sumi uh, from Villa Wolf um, in the Pfalz region of Germany. Okay. Um, and um, the things uh, I want you to know about Villa Wolf is um, that as with many um, wineries here in uh, in Germany, um, there's always lots of tradition, lots of history, um, mm -hmm. and it's the same here with Villa Wolf. So it was founded in 1756, um, and we're sitting here in this lovely courtyard, or mm -hmm. not in the courtyard, but no, uh, it's raining <laughs> we're out looking, looking out um, uh, into this um, courtyard, and it's it's quite historic, as you can see. And um, it was finished a building in 1843. Mm -hmm. um, the cellar is old, the building is old, um, lots and lots of history. Um, and although the original Wolf family is not here anymore, um, I'm not a wolf, Ernie's not a wolf, right. <laughs> but we're continuing on this tradition um, and the tradition of winemaking in the Fals. Um, so besides our and Riesling... In, and in that tradition, just to be clear, you actually are the winemaker at the yes. Wolf. Um, okay. I am. I forgot again. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very charming forgetfulness. All right. Yes. Um, so, um, what is it about Forst Wackenheim, this general area that yeah. needs to be known to understand false mm -hmm. wines as opposed to any other region in, in yeah. Germany? Um, so, Germany overall, as you know, is a cool climate region. And um, most of the uh, wine regions are close mm -hmm. together and they're all in the south except for the ones in the eastern part of, of Germany. But even within that close part, um, we are quite warm, quite south, um, and all these things are expressed in the wines as well, I think. Um, so if you compare them to Mosul, Rheingau, um, they are a little bit more full body, a little bit more warm in nature. Um, Nahe, it's funny, but Nahe is right in between. Um, and if you taste wines from the Nahe, I think you can taste that they are in between. They are mm -hmm. not quite as straightforward and clear as uh, the Rheingau Mosel uh, Rieslings, um, but have that warmer touch from the Falls as well. So it's really as further south you go you get more of a warm um warmer climate mm -hmm. and um that's important to know um so the almond trees that we saw mm -hmm. this morning um the lemon trees yeah. i told you about almond so, trees already blooming in in beginning mid -March. of march mid march that's, yeah it's not what most people expect when they think no of you Germany. wouldn't think so um, but that that really characterizes this area mm -hmm. and then with wine making it's always climate of course um, and uh, soil. So climate, warm climate, lots and lots of sunshine hours. So we have uh, one of the highest sunshine hours in Germany here, um, close to 1800 sunshine hours. Um, not today, unfortunately. It's okay. <laughs> Nothing's growing out there right now. You're yeah. fine. So it's good. <laughs> um, and then uh, in terms of climate, what is also very important is this, um, the heart range, the, the mountains um, that we saw when we were driving to the vineyards. Um, and that really protects us from all the bad weather, really. Okay. Again, today, not the best uh, <laughs> day um, to explain this. But usually um, when I'm out in the vineyards, um, you can see these dark clouds coming from um, the other side and you're thinking okay should I run to the car or mm -hmm. you know what's going to happen and then usually what happens is they just pass by and over on the other side you can see all the rain and, and bad weather coming down so the Hark mountains are just tall enough to kind of force them to go up yeah. and then they settle back down and, and rain falls on exactly later into the into the journey yes okay. so so that is really what um, makes up um, the climate here um, and in terms of soil uh, mm -hmm. we have mostly sandstone um, soil here in the middle heart so the Pfalz is a long wine region it runs from north to south and it's about 85 kilometers from the top to the bottom okay. and it um, in the north it um, borders Rheinhessen and then in the south it borders um, Alsace. 
and it's basically um, cut in half and the northern part is called the middle heart and that's the traditional wine okay. um, area and the southern part is called Südfals, South Fals, so not very creative there. <laughs> but very explanatory. <laughs> yes, um, and there it's, um, they, they started a little bit later than the northern okay. part. Um, and it used to be a little bit more agricultural land over there and they have a little bit more loamy sand, um, those mm -hmm. kind of soils. Okay. Um, and here uh, in the middle heart, um, we like to say, oh, we have the most Grand Cru's in a very small, concentrated area. And if you're standing here in Wachenheim and looking to Forst, which is the neighboring uh, village in the south, um, you have all these Premier Cru, Grand Cru areas um, right next to each other, mm -hmm. all these vineyard sites right next mm -hmm. to each other. Mm -hmm. um, and. Uh, we have at Villa Vol four different single vineyards. Okay, let's run through those. Mm -hmm. um, actually five, um, starting with our Village Riesling, mm -hmm. which is also a single vineyard. Um, it's from the Königsvingert, which is at the, um, when you enter Wachenheim um, on your right hand side. Mm -hmm. It's a beautiful uh, vineyard with um, lots of with, that gives off lots of citrus flavors um, that comes from sandstone and loamy sand mm -hmm. um, and that just really supports all these zesty fruit right. characters. So slow that winery and the vineyard name down for us um, right. poorly spoken American folks. <laughs> so it's Wachenheimer Königswingert. Okay. So we um, follow this Burgundian system of mm -hmm. village name first and then add ER for coming from. Mm -hmm. So Wachenheim is the village of um, where the estate is. Mm -hmm. So Wachenheim Meer. And then the name of the vineyard, um, the site is Königswingert. Königswingert. King's Vineyard. King's Vineyard. Yes. How much how much I've learned today is amazing. <laughs> okay, so um, so that's on the south side of Wachenheim. The and north side. It's on the north side. Yes. Okay. I came from the south. Yeah, you came from the south, okay. yes. Okay. All right. Um, what's and then? And then we have two Premier Crus um, over here, the slightly smaller bottles. Mm -hmm. um, we have the Goldbüsche and the Bells. So these are both Wachenheimer properties. Um, Wachenheimer Goldbüsche and Wachenheimer Bells. Okay. So for those of us who thought it was Goldbechel, Goldbechel. Bechel, yeah. Okay. Which Bells. means um, small golden river. Oh, okay. Yes. So Bechel is actually an, um, like when you make a word sound small and cute. Ah, what do you call diminutive? that? Diminutive, yes. So the actual word is Bach. Um, and if you make a diminutive out of it, it's Bechel. Okay. Yes. Little river. Little river. Okay. Golden river. Little golden <laughs> river. Right, so the other uh, Premier Cru we have is the Wachenheimer Bells. Um, this is our monopole site. It's a one hectare in size uh, vineyard. Mm -hmm. um, and here we have pure limestone soil. So um, sandstone, mm -hmm. limestone. Okay. Um, and then we have two Grand Crus. So we have the Ruppertsberger Hoheburg. So we are in a different village here, Ruppertsberg, and uh, Hoheburg means high castle. Okay. Um, and then we have Forster Pechstein, so also a different uh, village, um, Wachenheim, Forst, Ruppertsberg, going south. And just, just for those who aren't looking at the vineyards, uh, there's literally a, it's like driving through Burgundy, same idea. There's just literally a, a two track, one car width that separates Forst from Buckenheim. Yes. And, um, and you can almost throw a rock from the winery into Pechstein. Yeah, it's, it's everything's it's, it's a kilometer very, from, from exactly across, a thousand meters. That's it. Everything's very close by. Belz is very close by to Pechstein, uh, close by to Goldbechel and even Hoheburg is not that far away. So everything is very close by and that's what makes this so special. You have all these different sites mm -hmm. and I hope they taste it different too. They do. They, they, <laughs> trust um, me, those listening, they all taste different. 
so you can you can really almost say it's the soil because mm -hmm. the uh, varietal is the same it's mm -hmm. all riesling they're all similar in in uh, age mm -hmm. um, vinification is same and they're so close by that you can't almost can't say that there is a difference in climate or microclimate or right. something i mean there's is slightly because of the drainage of the soil and mm -hmm. and all of the, these things go into terroir um but uh yeah so this is you can say it's it's mostly the soil which mm -hmm. makes up the the characteristics of these and, and it is very um micro specific as you're looking from goldbeschel up the hill to bells we're really only talking about a couple hundred meters yeah. in in distance and exactly. yet they are completely different completely yeah. it's fascinating well it so makes my wine fun right <laughs> yeah awesome definitely. okay um anything else you want to tell everybody about these wines um well maybe um since we're talking about vineyards um so we've been um farming them organically completely um since 2014. Okay. um it's something we believe in personally so um when i got here in 2012 that was one of the first things we started changing um and it's really a process um and so we changed one thing and then another and another and 2014 was really the first vintage where everything was um, completely organic outside and in the cellar um, and since then we've continued and um, we're happy with it I feel good with it and um, it's good for the wines and the philosophy is really that wine is made in the vineyard so that's that's something we believe in and mm -hmm. That's why we have to look for look out for these vineyards. We have to care for them because if the vineyards are not there, then the vines are not there. Then there's no wine mm -hmm. at all. Um, so we have to take care of them. We have to see um, that they're, the vines are healthy, the soil is healthy, that bugs are crawling around, worms are crawling around, bees are flying around, mm -hmm. and all these happy things. Yes, that's a great, great point. Uh, that's one of the big questions that, that is on top of mind in the U.S. now mm -hmm. is um, organic farming, or is it sustainable at least? Mm -hmm. Is it biodynamic? So I'm glad you clarified that because I hadn't asked that question yet. No, you hadn't. Well, now we know. That's true. <laughs> and I, I want to thank you for your time, and this is really going to be helpful to our okay. team back home. I hope so. <laughs>